Man, who are you really? Who you really are? Who are you? I am a child of the King. Amen? Amen. I am saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, tongue-talking, devil-chasing person. That's, that's who we are. I, I don't know who you think you are, but I want to talk to you for just a little bit. First Samuel chapter 16, starting with verse 1. I'll read as long as I want to, and I'll tell you something. All right. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long? Now, this is a very familiar passage. You guys should know this. How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, saying, I have rejected him for reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil. And go, I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. <clears throat> and Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto, him, unto me him whom I name unto thee. It's hard to say that. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake. He came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves, come to me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons, and called them to the sacrifice. Keep reading, we're almost done. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before me. For oh, before him, sorry. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not at his countenance, nor at the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For, I, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh in the heart. And Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. And then Jesse made Shammah to pass, pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. Keep going, we're almost done. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send to fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come in. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to be in your house. Thank you for another chance to, to speak and preach your gospel. You're so awesome to me. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life. I thank you so very much for everything you've done in my life and what you're doing. Anoint me to preach this this morning, God. And God, we give you the praise, the honor, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Listen, who are you this morning? I'm telling you, this is this. I, I want to share with you a few things. I've got so much going through my spirit, and I got 20 minutes to get it out, so you have to listen fast. I probably will. So you have to listen fast. Hear me. I don't know who it is that you feel. I know you know the right answer is to say you're a child of God. I know you know that's the right answer, but who are you really? David was just somebody living an ordinary life, doing what he was supposed to do. He was, the, he was the keeper of the sheep, so that's what David was doing. He was keeping and tending sheep. He, he was the youngest, and they said, you go watch the sheep, boy, I've done my time. You go, you go do it. And so he had, all these things were going on in his life, but, but who was he really? See, what the people, what his brothers and his daddy didn't realize is there was a king among them, and they didn't even see it. They, they didn't see, I, I'm going to just try to get this out and share with you this morning, that though they may not call you what you really are, they may call you by your name, but God has another name for you, and He's fixing to walk into your life and change your life. Yeah. What happens is this, is that Samuel is mourning over Saul because he rejected Saul. God rejected Saul to be king. And so Samuel is mourning over him. And Samuel is, is lamenting. Go back to verse 1 if you will. Samuel is, is lamenting over Saul. And, and, his, and his horn of oil is ran dry. I don't know if you've ever been there when your horn of oil, which is a representation of the anointing of God in your life, has run dry. I don't know if you've ever been there when you can't feel God. Maybe I'm preaching to somebody. I don't know. But where you can't feel His presence, where you can't hear His voice, where you can't, you just can't feel Him. And you don't know what's going on, but you, all you know is that the horn of oil that you had, the horn of the, the lighthouse of oil that you had, 
has run dry. All you know is that you don't feel the anointing of God anymore. You're mourning over what you appear you think you have lost. And God said, quit mourning over the thing that you wanted and start rejoicing over the thing I want for you. It's time for us to quit mourning over what we appear to have lost and start rejoicing for what God is bringing into our lives. How long will you mourn over who you think you are? Come on, somebody. Well, they don't let me sing. Quit mourning, because they mean, they mean you can't sing. <laughs> Maybe that's not your calling. It may be what your desire is, but it may not be your calling. They won't let me preach. Well, baby, maybe you can't preach. They're going to stick and let you teach. But maybe that's, maybe that's your desire to have the Lord Noble packed out with men and women clamoring over you and saying, oh, what a great preacher you are, but if you can't get four words out under the anointing of God, I don't want to hear you. Okay, I'll get up there. How long will you mourn over what you, you think that has passed by, but God said, get up. Quit mining and crying and mourning over what God has already done away with. Listen, Samuel didn't put Saul away. God did. Yeah. That's right. That's right. But Samuel was mourning over what he thought he had lost. He thought he had lost his king. <laughs> I'm about to lose my natural white man. I'm just telling you. I'm about to, I, I, I don't know whether to run, jump, skip, or spin. I, I don't know. But I don't know how, how in the world do you, do you just sit there and mourn over what you feel like God has taken away from you when God hasn't taken one thing away from you. He's taken some hindrances away from you and trying to get you somewhere. Yeah. He's trying to get into your life and try to change your life. And you hang on to all the other junk and look over your shoulder and say, God, but why? And God's like, would you please quit mourning over the joke I got out of your life? Would you please quit mourning over the job you think you lost? Would you please quit mourning over the people in your life that have gone away? Would you please just get your horn full of oil? What does that represent? That means get full of the Holy Ghost. Can I get somebody please to just get full of the Holy Ghost? If I, if I get half a church to just get full of the Holy Ghost, if I just get half the people to get a desire and a hunger, we'll change this city. Amen. If I get ten people full of the Holy Ghost, we will change this city. Amen. That's right. Well, glory. I told you y'all wasn't ready for me today. Hallelujah. Did the Lord listen? The Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him. Samuel did not reject Saul. God rejected Saul. But Samuel felt responsible. Baby, can I share something with you? When God takes something out of your life, it's not your burden to carry. Oh, goodness. I don't know. It's not yours to carry. It's not your cross to bear. When God removes it, it's removed for a reason. It is not yours to carry any longer. Would you please just lay it down? Right. Yeah. Would, you please, would, you, would, you, would you quit mourning over your souls in your life? And would you get your horn full of oil? How do I do that? You go to God and you pray and you seek God and you spend some time in prayer. I'm not talking about tearless prayer. I'm talking about tears dripping on the altar. I'm talking about people wailing before God. When's the last time you heard somebody wailing before the Lord? When's the last time you heard, oh, God? I'm just asking. When's the last time you heard, oh, And it was coming out of you. It wasn't coming out of somebody else. I don't know. Maybe I'm just too old-fashioned. I don't know. Maybe I just believe God's just who He says He is. Maybe I'm just crazy. I, I don't know, man. Maybe we don't. Maybe God's elevated past that, and I'm just stuck. I, I don't know. But all I know is that 
that when there was that wailing in people's lives, that things changed in people's lives. All I know is when there was a wailing, the church was on fire for God. All I know is when there were people wailing and, and seeking God's face, that people were getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. That's all I know. People were getting healed and people were getting touched and their marriages were getting put back together. That's all I know is when there was a deep wailing, oh God, inside the Pentecostal church. Amen. Well, glory. When there was that, oh, you know, the groanings that no man can utter, you know, that, that, that groaning that the Holy Ghost can groan out of you. Some of y'all don't even have any idea what I'm talking about. Y'all have never groaned before the Lord in your life. You've never had God just draw things out of you in your life. You don't know any clue, you have any clue what I'm talking about. Some of you do, but some of you don't have any idea. And it's not your fault. You just haven't seen it in the last 30 years. <laughs> Why do you throw that? Cause. Amen. Travailing before God. Yes. Seeking His face. Yes. Turning the plate upside down. Yes. I'll not eat. I was talking in the, the, the room, the meeting this morning with the men, and we're talking about fasting, and we got on the subject of Kelly's mama, and how she would cook a whole dinner for the whole clan and wouldn't touch one bite of it. Spend her time in fasting and prayer. I remember that. I saw something somebody told me or I saw. I watched her do it. I watched your mother. I watched I watched Joey's mother not eat. I watched his I watched his daddy go three, four days without eating. Fasting and travailing before God. So you know, he doesn't even know I even paid attention. I thought I was just out trying to cause trouble. <laughs> I was paying attention. I watched them. I saw with my own eyes. I watched their lives. I saw how they got where they got with God. I know, listen, I know the sacrifice it takes to get there. But my question is, are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to give your McDonald's up? Are you willing to turn over the plate? Are you, are you willing to... I don't even need a McDonald's. I use it for example all the time. Never even need there. Uh, are you willing to give your Arby's up? I like Arby's curly fries. Are you willing to give the Sonic foot long chili cheese cone with chili and cheese only on it? You ready to give that up? And nothing wrong with that. Made me hungry already. <laughs> Honey, we're going to sign. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but I watched their lives as a little boy growing up into the man that I am today. I watched. See, y'all didn't have any idea. I, I, I paid attention. But I go to Joy. I go to Nelma's house when we were dating. And her mom and dad would be fasting, and she'd fix food for, I guess, four people, whatever. Because she didn't fix it for her and her dad, because they, were, they weren't eating. But then she would fix fried chicken and whatever else. They went with it. Fried squirrel, barbecue coon, whatever. <laughs> she fixed that more than one time. But I'd go, and then I would watch, and they wouldn't eat. They'd go to that back bedroom off the kitchen. And they'd go pray during mealtime. I remember as a little boy going to Kelly's house, playing with Mike and Mark and whoever else was there. And when Brother Ken had said something about Sister Trina, I remember that. She'd fix lunch and go off to herself in another room somewhere. And I use those examples because that's where I grew up. I'm not saying anybody else is unholy. You may have done the same thing. I don't know. But that's just where I, that's just what I know. And I watch these people do it. Don't tell me we can't. We don't want to. I can't. I, I can't fast for four days. Lord, we can't fast for four minutes. I, I, we gotta have a we gotta have a piece of candy in our mouth. Uh, we gotta have a, a, a drink, a soda. That's, I'm, the, I'm the worst. I gotta have a Dr Pepper or Pepsi all the time for some reason, for no other reason. It's comfort food because it's there. In case, in case I ever do get thirsty, it's there. Listen, how long are you gonna mourn over the things 
that God has taken out of your life? How long? How long? How long are we going to continue to be the people that, that dream and, and those dreams have fallen apart and we think that God is just, God is just taking my dream? No, no, no. Our dreams are rejected, but God's plan is enacted. Right. No, that doesn't matter what my desires are. It matters what His desire is for my life. It doesn't matter what I want. It matters what He wants. I'd like to be six foot four. Huh? <laughs> but I'm not there. Never have been there. Never will get there. My son is already over six foot four. Thank God. I'm glad he's that tall. Great. Hallelujah. I'm glad. But I, I, listen, my body is not six foot four. It's six foot and stopped. Okay? I, don't get, I didn't get the extra four inches. And so I'm stopped at six foot tall, which is fine with me. But that's not what I, my heart's desire would be. I'd like to be six foot four. Because then I wouldn't be as fat as I am. Okay? And so... <laughs> But our dreams are rejected. But God's plan is enacted. But we have got to stop. Hey, brother. Run out, baby. Ah! Okay. And so, and so we, we have got to understand that it is time for us to quit mourning over the things that we appear to have lost. And start rejoicing for the things God's bringing to us. Get our horns full of oil again. i got to get back on track. Get our horns full of oil again. Get them filled back up again. And get somebody that has a, has, a, has a desire and a hunger for the anointing of God in their life. Get the anointing in their life. Listen, quit mourning over our lost dreams and cause. Listen, they listen. When we mourn over our lost dreams, it causes a loss of anointing. I can prove that to you. Samuel, fill your, your horn full of oil. Quit mourning and get your oil filled up again. As long as you're mourning, you're not using the anointing of God. As long as you are mourning over what you have appeared to have lost, the anointing oil that God is leaking out and is, that is running dry and you've refused to fill it back up, you must fill the anointing every now and then. You just don't get filled one time and that's all you get. You've got to come back every now and then and get filled back up. And every now and again, get filled back up. And every now and again, get filled back up. Mourning over the lost dreams cause a loss of anointing and the ability to bless others. You've got to stop with the mess and get the anointing so you can bless. You missed that? Stop with your mess. Fill your anointing back up so that you can bless somebody. Yeah. My God in heaven, is it? I hope that you guys are getting this this morning. Get your, get your horn filled with oil. Get filled up again. A horn of oil needs to be refilled. That's why it has a hole in the top. Not only does it come out that hole, but God pours in that hole. I don't know. I don't need praise and worship to work me up into a laugh. That's not what it's about. I jump, hop, skip, whatever else I do up there. But that's not for you. I don't care. I don't know if you, were, if you believe that or not. I'm not trying to work you up into a frenzy. I'm worshiping. That's why it's so hard for me to give it up because that's I've, I've been on the stage since I was 13 years old and, and that's part of worship for me is to be there when I was 13 and begin to kick that bass drum. The anointing of God would fall in my life. Now that I'm 45 and I hit that first chord, the anointing of God falls in my life. Because it's not, it's not about you. And I love you. And I'm glad you're here. And I, I want you to be here. And I want you to participate in worship. But we're not here to entertain you. I don't get a paycheck to be an entertainer. I don't get a paycheck for that. I get, I get to get up here. And I get to try to lead you into the presence of God. But listen, I can't lead you where you don't want to go. If you don't want to go there, then just sit there like a little bump on a log, whatever, and enjoy the show. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to worship. I'm not going to get all lathered up. And for you, it's not for you. It's not entertainment. 
to me. I don't even know. I don't even. I'll be honest with you. Now I say, were they there? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Was such and such there? I don't know. When I'm preaching, like right now, I see your faces, but I don't see your faces until I, unless I get down there and look at you. I see you, but I don't see you because it's not about. Listen, I'm not speaking. I'm not just speaking to you. I'm speaking through you. Okay. I'm just not talking to Sister Latricia. I'm talking to everybody. God's trying to speak to you this morning. God's trying to get hold of you in your life this morning. Listen, with the anointing comes direction from God, and I'm trying to hurry. But with anointing comes direction from God. Samuel, get up, Samuel. Quit whining and crying over what you thought you lost. Get full of the Holy Ghost, Samuel. Get full of the power of God, Samuel. Get yourself up, Samuel. How long do I have to watch you wallow in yourself? Pity, Samuel. Get yourself up. Get full of the Holy Ghost again. Does anybody remember I used this statement probably five years ago in this church? How many have ever seen the movie Hope Floats? I used this statement. It's one of my favorite statements in that, in that movie. Bernie, you used to be audacious. People used to stop and watch you walk down the street. But you've forgotten who you are, Bernie. But I haven't forgotten. I still see it. Bill forgot who you are. That's not exact, but it's close. And I use this statement in this church. You used to be audacious. The power of God used to flow through you. And people would stop and watch you walk down the street. And you have forgotten who you are. But I still see it. You have forgotten where you whence you came. But I still remember. I still have I have a good memory. I remember about my childhood. I remember about some things. And I listen, I remember when people used to talk about this place as a healing and Holy Ghost moving place. But it had people in it that desired God more than they desired to be on vacation, more than they desired to be at work, more than they desired to be anywhere else. They are not talking about vacations or work, but what they, they, they desired to be in the house of God. They desired to be on their face before God. They desired a, oh, God, in their life. When the anointing comes direction, when the anointing comes direction, in verse 2, he says, and Samuel said, I can't do this. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he'll kill me. And Jehovah said, take a heifer with thee and say, I come to sacrifice to Jehovah. Listen, this is Samuel. Say something a little old. <coughs> Nobody. <coughs> this, this is the anointing of, this is the anointer of kings. This is the man who pours anointing oil on someone's head and said God chose you to be king and the, and the rest of the country follows after what he said because he heard from God. This isn't somebody that they don't know. This is Samuel the prophet. This is Samuel the man, the man of God. This is Samuel. This ain't some little minor prophet that you can't find his book in the Bible. This is 1 Samuel. This is him. He's sitting there and he said... Well, how can I go? Because when you lose your anointing, you lose your nerve. When your oil runs dry, you lose who you are. You forget who you are and you forget where you came from. When you, when you lose the anointing of God in your life, how do I lose the anointing of God? Now, Brother Jeff, you said that Saul was still anointed because once anointed, always anointed. That's true. But hear me. But hear me, you know the difference when you're full of oil and when you're empty. Right. When you're full of the power of God and when you don't, you can't, you couldn't heal the headache of a gnat. Amen. 
Ah, where can I go from here? Where can I go from here? Here we go. Samuel lost his nerve because he had lost his anointing. Amen. Uh, the Bible says, get your horn filled with oil. <clears throat> the anointing horn was empty. Or at least it was low. And God said, fill it up, Samuel. Fill it up. Can I share something with you? It's time you fill your anointing horn up one more time. It's time for you to fill it up one more time. It's time for you to get full of the Holy Ghost again. I don't know what to, I don't know where I'm going here. That's a hallelujah. I, I don't know. Listen. I don't know. I don't know how else to say it. I don't know how else to plead with you. I, I, I don't know how else to. God, this is the words God's given me to give you. I, I don't. I don't know. You look at me like I'm talking to you. I'm talking Spanish to a bunch of Chinese people. I. I, I don't. I, I don't. Yeah. You're looking at me like, what are you talking about, sir? <laughs> Would you please elaborate on that? Because I really don't know. Holy Ghost. I left that we've not even heard of such a thing. <laughs> I mean, you're looking at me like, like I'm crazy. Maybe it's just because your belly's hungry. I don't know. <laughs> but I, but just hang with me for just a few more minutes, please. But with the anointing of God comes direction in your life. Oh, I just don't know what to do. We'll wait on God to fill the Holy Ghost. You don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen anybody yet. I've never seen a man yet that was full of God and full of the power of God that didn't know what direction he was supposed to go. Yeah. Read it. Find a place where a man was full of God and full of Holy that God didn't speak to him yeah. or her. You can't find it. When you're full of God and God's full inside of you and you're abiding in Him and He's abiding in you, you shall ask what you will. It should be done unto you. And we've got to understand that we've got to get inside of Him and He's got to be inside of us. When the anointing comes direction from God, i got to go. It says that go to Jesse's house. That's what God told Samuel. Go to Jesse's house. I have provided me a king among his sons. Now, isn't it interesting that, that Samuel didn't know where he was going and Jesse didn't know what he had in his house, but God had already made a way and God had already provided and God had already made a way. And this is, they didn't have any idea what was happening, but they, I, this is what they knew is that Samuel said, I can't go because Saul's going to kill me. And God made a way and said, take a heifer with you and go sacrifice it unto me. Yeah. And go tell Jesse to come to the sacrifice because yeah. I've, I've provided for me a king out of his sons. Right. Sometimes you got to take a heifer with you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Sometimes you just got to take a heifer with you. you got to get out of the place where you're Oh, dear God. Sometimes you just got to take something with you and go and just do what God says to do. Right. With anointing comes direction. So listen, so, Je so Samuel goes to Jesse's house. And Samuel's there. And a pit dad walks by. I'm sorry. Eliab walks by. Surely he's the one. Eliab means God is my father. That's what Eliab means. God is my father. Surely he's got to be the king. Because we rejected Saul, because Saul thought he was greater than the, than he, had, he, he didn't have to obey God anymore. So he had, you know, I love in the chapters previous, it says that, that Samuel goes to Saul and says, when you were little in your sight, God exalted you. But now you think you're something and God has rejected you. So you would think a man whose name was... What did I say? What was that name? God is my father. God is my father. You would think Eliab, the, the man whose name means God is my father, surely that would be the one that Samuel said no. God said no. Abinadab passed before him. And then Abinadab means father of a vow or father of willingness. So you would think surely he's willing to take the vow of kingship and he's willing to do it. He'll take the vow. He's the father of it. But God said no. Shama, if you want to see the spelling for, for David's son, it's not the spelling there. It's S-H-I-M-E-A-H. -E I did a little research on that. did a lot of research on that. Because it means that hear or obeys. 
that hears or obeys. So surely he's got to be. Shaman's surely got to be. Because we rejected Saul because he wouldn't listen or obey. So surely this one has got to be it. Surely he's got to be it. But God said, no. <coughs> Samuel walked into Jesse's life. Jesse was just an ordinary man with eight sons and a sheep herder. Jesse was a Bethlehemite doing his thing. Saul was rejected, which had nothing to do with Jesse. Saul was rejected. Samuel's mourning over the loss of Saul's anointing as king had nothing to do with Jesse as far as Jesse knew. But all of a sudden, God walks in Jesse's life and changes Jesse's whole entire world. He walks into his son's life and changed them from ordinary to extraordinary. Extraordinary. He changed everything by when he walked into their lives. The man of God changed everything in an instant. Samuel, without, listen, without his horn of oil, he was filled with fear. Man more than obeying God's word. God gave him direction. God gave him a word. To get him to the place where David, David could be called. David could be brought to the right place. David could be anointed. And David could be sent out. I, I have good gospel news for you. That though you may mourn over what you appear to have lost. And I'm trying to hurry. But though you may mourn over what you have thought you have lost. It was all to set you up to where you are right now. Because you just want to have an ordinary life. But God's going to step into your life and make it extra ordinary. I don't know about you this morning, but I need an extraordinary life. I need God to walk into my life. God looking for a church that's willing to give their life to Him. Some of you may believe it. Some of you may reject it. I don't know. But God's looking for somebody who will just simply open the door and say, come on in, God. Come on in, man of God. Come on in and change my life. Amen. There was never a warning that any of his sons would ever be considered can I just parenthetically insert? Please quit telling and let everybody hear what you used to be. Please quit telling everybody what you used to do. Please quit telling everybody where you used to go, how high you used to jump. How loud you used to shout. When you ain't shouted in 20 years, you ain't hopped, you ain't even hopped in five. And God's trying to move into your life, and you just say, God, whoa, 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 whoa Jack. I, I just I just want to have a normal. I just, I'm easy. My life is good. Don't bother me. Because can I share with you? That you can't have an encounter with God and leave like you came? Amen. Or else He's not God. Amen. You can't have God touch your life? Are you listening to me? Amen. You cannot have God touch your life and you not leave changed. God saw seven boys and none of them were the right one. I think it'd be good. To, you know, here's, a, here's my son. He's, God is my father. And my other son is I'm a father of a vow. I'm a father of willingness. Another one means that I hear and obey. But David meant beloved. 
Amen. I don't care who everybody else says they are. I don't care who everybody else thinks they are. But when God walks into your life, it's because you're beloved. You're beloved. I know if God's my Father sits right here. Hallelujah. I know Father of Val sits right there. Praise God. I know obeying here sits right here. I thank God for that. But I want to be His beloved. Amen. I want to be His beloved. I want to be beloved by God. It's a, it's a foreshadow. I don't have time to go there. But the church is the beloved of God. The church is the beloved of Jesus. I want to be part of the church. I want to be the beloved. I don't want you to tell me, oh, God is his father. He's such a great guy. Oh, he's he's a father of vow. He's such a great guy. Oh, I just I he he hears and obeys God's word. He's such a great guy. But I don't want to be rejected. I want to be his beloved. Amen. I want to be beloved. Does anybody hear me? I may have preached you all. But how, God, how? How do we do that? How do we do that? I'm so excited to tell you. I'm so excited to tell you. He calls you his beloved. That's who you are. Don't you realize that's why you're saved and everybody else is lost? Don't you realize it's just the reason that your life didn't fall apart when they left you? Because he loves you. So very much. I am talking loud. <laughs> he loves you so very much. He wants you to understand that he's not angry with you. I don't care what you've done, who you've done it with, how many times you've done it. He's not angry with you. You're his beloved. You're the church. You're the, you're his, you're the bride of his son. Dear God in heaven, notice, uh, I, I don't know why three people don't shout right there. I'm the bride of the, I get to be part of that wedding party. I'm, he loves me. Don't you understand? He loves me. Oh. Hallelujah. He loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. The B-I-B-L-E. That's the book for me. I stand upon the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. Hallelujah. I don't want to stop, but I got to. Hear me. You ought to be the happiest people on the face of the planet. It ought to be a joy just to get up in the morning. Because I am His beloved. He loves me. He loves me. He, he loves me. I, I don't have time to read all of it, but He loves me. And God's walking into your life. Listen, if you think that you think that little miracle of the land was something. You wait and see what God's going to do in your life. Amen. When God comes into your life and steps into your life, you wait and see what God's going to do in your life. Would you please just let God walk into your life? And would you just please quit, quit worrying about what God's going to do and just let Him do it? Would you, listen, if God does anything, every good gift is from the Lord. Amen. He's just going to do it. He's, listen, it's, it's time we understand that when, when people say, well, how come when they quit, they quiz you as to why things happen. I don't know, Jesus did it. I don't understand how I got it. Jesus did I understand the workings of salvation, but I don't know how he does it. Jesus did it. I don't know how Jesus just did it. How did you get that? Jesus did it. How come you're not sick? Jesus did it. It's time to let Jesus do it. And just let Jesus do it. Amen. Amen. With me just a little bit this morning. I, I'm, I'm already, I'm already drank half a glass of water. I'm missing out that dry preaching, killing me. I want you to understand. I, I am so excited about what God said. I didn't get half of this preach, but hear me. A man of God 
told David who he was going to be. Everybody else told him he was a shepherd. But a man of God walked into his life and changed his life, turned him upside down and said, no, 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 you're the king. Now whether you believe I'm a man of God or what, I'm going to tell you right now, you're kings and priests in this house. You're, a, you're God's beloved. I, 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 wish, I wish that God had enough oil I'd pour it on all of you. I had a 55 gallon drum of it. I'd just start pouring oil. And anoint you because you are to be the kings and the priests and the queens. You are God's daughter. You are God's son. You are God's. You are who God called you to be. It's time for you to start acting as if you are who God anointed you to be. Where did David go? Out to ten sheep. Because just because you're anointed doesn't mean you forsake your duty. That's right. And it's amazing. Isn't it amazing? <clears throat> That God opened up a door to get David in the palace because he went back out to the sheep. Sheep, sheep, sheep. He went back out to his herd. And when he was out there in the herd, God opened the door and got him in the palace. See, we don't read the Bible. We just kind of read the words. We don't read it. So do you think David was just hanging out playing a harp or do you think he was learning how the things of the kingdom work? Yeah. Right. See, God didn't put you in a place you can't handle. And so he got him into a place to where he could see how the kingdom worked. Yes. For he was training him. Though he was anointed to be king, he wasn't king yet. But he was training him in the council of Saul how to be king. Because you don't want a king that doesn't know how to be the king. Stand with me. I don't know about you, but I preached myself happy last night. I preached myself happy today. I'm excited to be a saint. I'm excited that God is that God loves me. I'm excited that God's walked into my life and turned my life upside down. I'm excited that God has changed. And listen, and it, it doesn't just happen for me. It happens for you. When God walks into your life, He changes things. If you don't want Him to change things, keep the door locked. Because He's going to change it. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you.